Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we will be talking about fading that is seen in wireless communication channels. So what do you mean by fading? Well, let's find out. Till now, we saw that whenever a particular transmitter antenna wanted to send a particular signal to a particular receiver antenna, what it did was that it sent that particular signal to either of the atmospheric layers, be it the troposphere or the ionosphere. What the transmitter did was that it sent the signal to either of these layers and it gets reflected over here and then it gets received at the receiver. So this was what we saw till now. This is the basic principle behind how communication happens. But here, there's a problem. If something happens to this signal or this signal, whatever information was being sent by the transmitter would completely get lost and would never be received at the receiver. So what they do is that the same signal is sent to the receiver through multiple paths. That is, this would be one path, this would be another path, another path would be like this. So, through multiple paths, the signal reaches the receiver. So, therefore, at the receiver, what it does is that it takes the vector sum of all these different paths and it takes the vector sum and it deduces the information that was actually sent by the transmitter. As simple as that. But in such kind of a scenario, certain random fluctuations or random variations in the amplitude or the phases are observed at the receiver. This phenomenon in which certain random fluctuations or variations are seen or observed in the amplitude or the phase of that particular signal is what we refer to as fading. So here what we observe is that when the transmitter sends the signal towards the receiver through multiple paths, through each of these paths, these signals will reach the receiver at different periods of time. So therefore the fading may be caused due to two reasons. First one being the interference of the signals that is received at the receiver at different periods of time. That might be one reason that contributes towards fading. And the second reason is the abnormalities or the variation in the refractive index or the height of the particular ionization layer or the ionosphere. So these are the two reasons that may contribute towards fading. Fading. So here at the receiver, the received signal is calculated as the vector sum of each of these signals that is being sent through each of these paths. So now a communication channel which undergoes fading is referred to as a fading channel. So therefore there are different types of fading channels. What are the different types of fading channels? Well, let's find out. So, the first kind of a fading channel is a flat fading channel. So, if a particular channel has got a constant gain and a linear phase response over a bandwidth greater than the bandwidth of the transmitted signal, then the received signal in that particular channel would undergo flat fading. So, I've written it down. If the channel has got a constant gain and a linear phase response over a bandwidth greater than the bandwidth of the transmitted signal, then the received signal will undergo a fading referred to as flat fading. Here, they are also known as amplitude varying or narrow band channels. So, next we have frequency selective fading channels. So, if a particular channel has got a constant gain and a linear phase response over a bandwidth lesser than the bandwidth of the transmitted signal, then that channel is said to be a frequency selective fading channel. Here I've written it down. If the channel has a constant gain and a linear phase response over a bandwidth which is smaller than the transmitted bandwidth, then the channel creates a frequency selective fading. Here, this channel induces ISI or inter-simple interference. So now, in order to understand the next two types of fading, we have to know what we refer to as coherence time. So coherence time is defined as the measure of the transmitted signal duration for which the distortion that is present across this channel becomes noticeable. So that is what you refer to as coherence time. So based on this coherence time, we have a fast fading channel and a slow fading channel. So in a fast fading channel, fast fading occurs when the coherent time of the channel is small relative to the delay requirement 
of a particular application. I have written it down. Fast fading occurs when the coherent time of that channel is very small relative to the delay requirement of that application. And on the contrary, therefore, a slow fading channel is a channel in which slow fading occurs when the coherent time of the channel is large relative to the delay requirement of the particular application. So this thus sums up what you refer to as fading and the different types of fading that we experience in wireless communication systems so i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you mean by fading and i'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned stay subscribed and i will see you guys in the next video thank you